What's up, you beautiful and not so beautiful collectors? This is Optobotomus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're finally going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Masterpiece MP36, none other than the Destron or Decepticon leader himself, the evil Megatron. Years and years we have waited for this. And finally, here it is. A completely redesigned and improved masterpiece version of Megatron has been something that us collectors have wanted for years. MP05 Megatron came out way back in 2007, and things have greatly changed in the past 10 years. Now for the package, as you can see, the front of it has that very classic Transformers Masterpiece logo. Then you can see down here at the bottom, MP36, uh, Destron Leader, Megatron. And I have no idea what long life design is. That's something new. You come around here to the top and you have another image of Megatron with uh, more of an action pose kind of thing. You got the Transformers Masterpiece text along that side. Same as on the opposite side. On the back of the package, you got several different product shots. You got a, a scale image here showing that he's 260 millimeters tall which roughly translates to a little over 10 inches and then utilizing my uh, little translation app again it's not a hundred percent accurate but it basically gives you an idea this section right here goes on to talk about how transformers has become synonymous with deformed robots not only in japan but all over the world through various series, Transformers has expanded that Megatron is basically the symbol of evil. It goes on to talk about how he appeared in the very first episode of Transformers and continues to fight constantly with Convoy or Optimus Prime to steal the energy resources of Earth. It goes on to talk about how this figure is a new interpretation of that MP05 Megatron, in which they change the size, strive to get better proportions, capture the animation look much better, as well as improve the mobility or articulation. Also, finally, we get the silencer with it, which again goes towards accurately representing how Megatron looked. Remember, the original MP05 Megatron did not come with that. That was a third-party add-on. In addition to all that, for the first time in the Masterpiece series, Megatron here features a sound gimmick, which in addition to the familiar transformation sound and gunshot sounds, the original voice actor at the time is put into this. By combining the dignified voice, as well as being able to swap out the facial expressions, it says that you can enjoy actions as if he were alive. Then it goes on to talk about right down here that utilizing uh, his laser sword, uh, blaster, energy mace, all that stuff, you can actually uh, recreate a lot of his very memorable scenes and that he's also scaled very nicely with Masterpiece 10 Optimus Prime, obviously, as well as the rest of the uh, very recent Masterpiece figures. And utilizing some of the parts from MP10 reproduces several other scenes that you could get. Such as like the very first episode of Transformers where they were on the dam and Optimus was using his uh, energy axe while Megatron used his mace. In addition to that, you can see that he comes with a key for Vector Sigma. And I'll get into all this later on, but he also does come with a battle damaged chest as well as a faceplate, which allows you to recreate his look as he was about to kind of end Optimus Prime's life. In addition to that, it talks about how you can uh, combine the scope to recreate several different things like a gun face as well as a, a kind of cannon for Megatron. You can also configure it in a way to create a display stand, which allows you to put him in various poses. Down here at the bottom, it shows that he does come with several different faces, a neutral one, a smiling one, kind of an angry one, and then that battle damage one I talked about. And down here, it shows his actual gun mode, which I believe it's a Walter P-38. I'm not a very big gun person, but I think that's what that's called. And how uh, by including all those different pieces, as well as utilizing some die cast, such as the actual trigger, they specifically say that when you put it in your hand, you get the unique feel of metal. So it's like you're holding a gun, I guess. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. I know that's not why you guys are here, but this is going to be a long video anyhow. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn and a soda, and let's get this guy out here and see how cool he actually is. 
Alright guys, so here we have MP36 Megatron opened up and out of his packaging. And starting off first, much like all Transformer Masterpiece figures, he does come with his instructions as well as his collector card. Now starting off first with the collector card, as you can see, you got really great art on here of Megatron both in his robot mode as well as his Walter P38. You see MP36 Megatron when you come to the back of the card. Again, the translation may not necessarily be exact, but what it essentially says is that his role is the Destron Emperor, or Decepticon leader, basically. His motto is Peace Through Tyranny, and it talks about how Megatron plots to conquest the entire universe. He has the leadership ability to bring together the Decepticons, creating an overwhelming fighting power. That he is an ambitious man who caused war on Cybertron, and to kill the Autobots, basically as well as to steal the energy resources of Earth and other planets. Then down here, obviously, you can see his tech specs. And then, of course, you got images of the toy itself. For the instruction manual, again, you got that same image here on the front of it. And basically, you have an entire book. Unlike a lot of the recent Masterpiece figures that are just kind of fold-out sort of instructions, there's a lot to this guy. When you open him up, you can see the figure as well as all of his accessories, and then you have a bit more of an extended bio that talks about approximately 9 million years ago, Megatron was born, it says, deep under the Cybertron star, which I, I think that just means on Cybertron. He then brings together all sorts of different, uh, it says, rogues for military use, and then basically brainwashes them, creating the Decepticon army and then leading it against the Autobots, a war that lasted for millions of years. As it intensified, the rich resources of Cybertron were basically driven to the point of collapse. So seeking new resources, the Decepticons left following the Ark, as well as the Autobots, on the battleship known as the Nemesis. We all know that that battle ensued, and both crashed to the Earth. Due to the uh, shock of the uh, crash, they went into a state of shock, basically going into stasis or so. Four million years later, in 1985, they awoke and fly into a new battle on a new stage. Megatron again asserts himself as the leader of the Decepticons, but we also learn that he's not just a, well, they say rough man. He also has intelligence, such as uh, planning strategy and planning and other kind of tactics, which again brings all the Decepticons under his leadership among them the rebellious starscream and the triple changers which it's interesting that they even mentioned triple changer and megatron pulls out their abilities basically as any good leader would do it also mentioned that he really does look down on earthlings as a primitive form of life including their actual technology basically boasting about his overall superiority. So again, that's not an exact translation, but you roughly get the idea. Coming around to the inside, we see a lot of the extra kind of accessories, how they kind of mesh some descriptions for him. Like up here, it talks about his nuclear charged fusion cannon, which again, translation may not be exact, but it says this terrible weapon makes a black hole from the narrow dimension and extracts antimatter. I mean, you kind of get the general idea of what it does, and that it's his actual greatest weapon and his trademark. The range and power of it reaches about 19 kilometers ahead and will slaughter even the strongest Autobot warriors, and even can make a small town disappear. The withdrawed antimatter can also be applied in various ways, such as putting up barriers, and that this is exactly the weapon suitable for the Decepticon leader. On the other side, we see the laser dagger, who during the battle in the movie he used when he lost his fusion cannon, and he fought with whatever he could find at the time, which was that sword weapon. He used it to cut down the scarred left side of Optimus, where he constantly aimed his the specific attack, which later obviously makes Optimus Prime die. He has his blaster, despite the fact that it severely opened up that gap on Optimus and ultimately gave him his fatal injury. That weapon became very, very well known. And then again, you see how all the different accessories can be kind of applied to the figure. He comes with his energy mace, which we know from the very first episode of Transformers, the key to Vector Sigma, as well as an actual headpiece, which he used on a clone of Optimus Prime, which it goes on to say how it caused great confusion, which obviously it would. Again, it shows all the different kind of attachments and how to do all that. And then it talks about his transformation. 
at least in terms of the animation and how he transforms into a gun, which is really a symbol of weapons and combat strength. And then you get into the actual instructions. And it is a fairly complex transformation, far more than anything that we've been getting previously. But as you can see, there's not a ton of steps. There's like 15. But it is a figure that you do need to go fairly slow with in practice. It's not nearly as fragile as MP05 was. Obviously, if he force things, things can break. And there are some reports of breaking on this figure, but I really feel that that's just because people are being ham hands and forcing things in positions that they're not supposed to go in. So really make sure you go over the instructions, check out various reviews, and get a really good feel for it. This is an expensive figure and really should be treated as such. And then on the back page right here, you can see that it goes into the making of Megatron. And really, this is a terrific looking figure. In my personal opinion, MP36 here is the best representation of Megatron that we have ever gotten. It's far superior to the MP05. And while there are some aspects of this that aren't perfect, I do think that it's also better than any other third party the offering. A lot of those third party figures, there's aspects of the figure that I like, but then there's things that I don't like. And ultimately when it comes down to it, they're about even. With MP36 here, I feel that the good far outweighs the bad. And because of that, makes this the best version of Megatron. Now again, looking at all of his accessories, starting off with his energy mace, you can see very nice purple that translucent plastic here. It can attach very nicely to his hand, and I'll show that all off. You have a very flexible chain right here, which just allows you to kind of swing it. But then you also have this section right here that has several different uh, hinge points, and then you can see in the middle, it's molded to look like a chain. So what you can do is actually detach this, put that on there, detach this kind of set that off to the side get rid of that and now you can have this in kind of a dynamic pose sort of look so it's not just flopping all over which is great i think that's a great inclusion uh, as i talked about he does come with his i should say clone control helmet zooming in here to get a little bit of a closer look real nice painted detail throughout the entire thing you got some nice purple and gray bits along the side you got the little uh, mouthpiece down here you got some nice blue around the center with the little uh, gray antenna little yellow bit there all the way throughout it really nice nice detail uh, he also does come with like i talked about his energy dagger very nice detail on this you got that kind of pink translucent piece that comes up here very nice purple handle and you got the little uh, tabs right there one thing that's cool is this can also detach so that you can use his gun which again very iconic looking gun if you guys grew up with transformers you know, much like myself this gun right here became the you know, harbinger of evil and uh, a symbol of just sadness but you can also then take this little piece and plug it right in there creating kind of like a blast effect which i think is really cool i like that that kind of carries over through the different accessories as I talked about, he does come with the key to Vector Sigma, which is really nice because it's actually made out of die cast. You got a really great gold paint on here, real nice molded detail throughout the whole thing. You got a little kind of keychain hole right there. But I love the fact that they made this out of die cast. We've gotten several different kind of third party representations of the key. And based on the color and the material that's put into this one, again, I definitely think that this is the best one that we've gotten. Very solid accessory to include as well. Now, he also does come with several different faces. Uh, now, I, I have this off because it's a little bit easier to transform it, but uh, zooming in here to get a better look at it and getting it to focus, this is just the regular face. You can see real nice silver paint here around the top of his uh, forehead area, but then you can see that his face is a little bit more of an off-white, so you can totally see two different colors. I really dig that. You got really great reflective uh, red paint there for his eyes. Absolutely love the black outline around. I mean, that looks like Megatron. Uh, he also does come with a laughing face, which I think people are a little bit meh about this. But, I mean, Megatron would laugh at, at a lot of different situations. So, I think it's kind of cool that they include a laughing face for him. You know, an evil, cynical kind of monster like Megatron. Kind of laughs at certain situations, and I love that they included it. He also has a more angry, yelling face. Again, that same paint with the forehead area, same paint with the actual face. With the open mouth, you can see they have a nice black paint on the inside great red color for the eyes still 
And then probably the best looking is a battle damage face. Now, this is how he looked as he was about to be, or I should say, claim victory over killing Optimus Prime. During that epic battle, there's that absolute classic, iconic scene where it's an up-close image of Megatron, and this is the face that we see in the amount of damage that he suffered at the hands of Optimus. But not only do you get that, you also do get a severely battle-damaged indented chest piece. You can also see that the Decepticon logo is warped and mangled. I just love the cracks, dings, dents. I mean, it even kind of, when you get in real close here, you can even see like fluid leaking from him. And you have a, a slightly different color paint for that. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous how that looks. And the chest plate really does just kind of send it to a whole nother level. Again, we'll take a look at all of this on the actual figure, but these are great inclusions. And then the biggest accessories are the uh, silencer as well as the uh, stock for the gun. Now, you can make this guy a whole lot bigger and more accurate. Now, I, I do want to mention this. When you get this, most retailers are required by law, at least here in the United States, to have a, a blazing orange cap. Uh, some of the panels are coming undone. Actually affixed permanently there. As you can see, that obviously can come off. The one here on the silencer, I can't get off. When you get this from your retailer, odds are it will have this. For mine, it was just glued in with kind of like a, a rubber cement on the inside there. So it was fairly easy to use some the pliers, just put my grip around there and actually pull it out. And then there was some glue on the inside here that I was able to clean out. Now, like I said, I can't get it off the silencer, but ultimately I don't care that much about the silencer. It's just this that I would want to have that, that removed from. So I'm glad that I could do that. Yours may or may not be able to do that. So don't get mad at me if you actually can't remove yours. But these are the other two main accessories. Now, one other part that I'll talk about that I'm seeing a lot of people have issues with is that putting this in can potentially scrape this. My recommendation is when you put it in, it's very easy, and then you're gonna start feeling resistance. Once you start feeling it, stop. You're gonna have a gap right here. I mean, I would imagine you're supposed to push it all the way in, but if you just wanna create that look, just go like that, and then slowly remove it. That will, at least on mine, prevent any scraping and any scuffing around the actual barrel. You may be able to do that as well. So again, slowly put it in and then gently push a little when you start feeling resistance. Then to add on the actual stock, you come around here. I think it goes this way. You got this little section right here. You got a little kind of sliding bit that this is going to groove in. You also got two little tabs right here and here that are going to lock in here and here. So you just bring that underneath, slide that up, that locks into place. And here's the completed look for Megatron. And it's large. Uh, I mean, you can see just how massive this is. Again, this is something that we never got with the official one. Or I should say the first one, I'm sorry. There was a third-party add-on set that included these that you could put on your MP05, but this is finally legit for us. Now, these other pieces can be other accessories as well, but this is the completed look. And then one final accessory, I guess, would be his fusion cannon. Obviously, we'll get to that here in a bit. But to remove this, you got this little button right here. You want to uh, depress this and then slide this down just like so. What it does is it takes these little uh, notches and it pulls them in so that you can slide it then down from the back of the handle. And then again, you just slowly remove this. There's no scuffing at all. Absolutely terrific. And then looking at the gun, I I'm really amazed with how good this looks. Now, there are a lot of panels. That's one thing that people have been complaining about. I don't mind it nearly as much because you have a basically one-to-one -one scale handgun. I mean, as you can see, it's even smaller than the original MP05, which makes sense because the robot mode is smaller. This is a whole lot more accurate in terms of the Walter P38. Now, it is a little bit bigger, but I mean, you could totally walk around with this and confuse people, and I do not recommend that at all because this really does look more like a a real gun than the uh, MP05 did. MP05 was just like grossly oversized. Uh, you can see that 
you do have a kind of working trigger. It doesn't do anything, but that is made out of die cast, I believe. I'm trying to, it's hard to feel, but it does feel a little bit cool. I'll have to play with that a little bit more to see, but you can see it's on a bit of a spring. You got the little hammer section back here that you can also move if you really wanted to, or you can just bring that up, kind of tabs into place. You had the scope right up here. You also had that little uh, red section that I do kind of wish that it, it was tied in with the trigger, but you have a little button right here that I'm gonna show the different sounds, but right now it's moved all the way forward so that when you push this button, you get the blasting sound. Now, listening to it, that really doesn't sound like Megatron's fusion cannon to me. It, it doesn't bother me all that much, but I do wish that it had a little bit more of a kind of screen accurate sort of sound. Now, that might have been how it sounded in the Japanese stuff. I never watched it, uh, so I don't know when they dubbed it over or whatever, if they changed that sound. But absolutely beautiful looking gun. As I talked about, he does have a lot of panel lines, but to take this and create an almost perfect screen accurate representation of Megatron, there is going to be a lot of extra kind of parts in this. And, and there are a ton of parts on this guy. I mean, I don't know the actual part count, but this way surpasses anything that we've gotten recently. And it shows in the complexity of the transformation. And it's just really a kind of modern marvel I guess, to, to see how they were able to engineer this to create Megatron. It, it's just absolutely amazing. So to get into the transformation, again, very extensive, but we got to start sometime. So we might as well start now. Now for his transformation, as I talked about, it is fairly complex. Despite the fact that he only has a few steps, there's a lot of very little pieces that really do a good job of kind of morphing into different areas to create an almost perfect looking robot. Now first, I am going to remove his fusion cannon. You don't have to, but it does make it a little bit easier in terms of kind of giving you some extra space. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Then come around here to this back section. You actually want to remove uh, the hammer from the back bit. It tabs in, so just uh, flex that back just like so. Kind of, you need to wedge these little pieces away from the, uh, the main section of the body. So just pull that out just like that. And then you can spread this whole section out. And as you spread it out, you're also going to pull it down and then kind of rotate it down to the side. So again, you have a little bit better of an angle here. So just rotate this down and out away from the body. Kind of angle this up again, just kind of get things out of the way. I actually like taking these and folding these up. Those just give you a little bit extra clearance down here in the bottom. That'll make much more sense later on. If you want to, you can take this little piece, fold that up. It doesn't really matter when you do it. Just kind of get that up there. Then come around here. You want to sort of loosen this bottom section of the finger guard away. And then come around here to these little top sections. And again, uh, th there's a lot of... Very tight tabbing with this. So kind of get your fingernail in there and pull this piece away. And then you can pull this away as well. Pull this away from the body there. And then do that with this bottom section. Pulling this out just like that. And then you can pull this all the way down. Getting this up. Well, I'll lift that up like that. Again, it tabs in so very securely and there is not a lot of room for kind of manipulation, but uh, it does get out of the way fairly decently. So again, then pull this down, getting this out like so. And then you can take this whole section and straighten out these legs. Now, as you bring these down, there's gonna be a little bit of, a, I guess, auto transformation right here. As you extend the thighs, these little pieces kind of fill in, which I think that's a wonderful bit of engineering. I think that that is quite impressive. Uh, you can then spin these out, take this, tuck these up and under, do that on this side as well. And then I'm just going to kind of hinge these and again just kind of move things out of the way so that you're able to get to some other areas of uh, this little piece it flopped down but i'm gonna leave that up like that go ahead and spread this just like so now one thing that i'll talk about is a lot of people are having problems especially going into uh, the uh, gun mode here this section here goes up and then locks into place a lot of people are having a very hard time getting this 
to uh, separate and I just push that back up there. What you can actually do is on the inside right here is a little screw. If you loosen that a little, I'm talking like one and a half, maybe two turns, not a heck of a lot that will loosen this up a little bit so that you can detach this very easily and you don't put any stress and you don't break anything. So if you have a problem with yours, like I said, just loosen that screw a little. So what you want to do here is rotate these up. You will feel it soft tab into place up there at the hip area and then you can angle these around like that. Go ahead and you can tuck these little uh, hammer sections down. It's really your personal preference what you want to do there. And then these legs actually have a lot of really cool engineering also in them. First what you're going to do, take these, rotate this down, get this out of the way. You can actually then take this pull this away and it kind of hinges down. You got this little flap section here that you can rotate that around. So just kind of tuck that in there and then pull this away like so. And then as you do, pull the uh, bottom section right here away a little bit so you can rotate this around. And as you do it, kind of fold this down and you tuck that in just like that. Bring that all the way around and then collapse that down. Bring this around and then this will come up and you, you really want to make sure that you get this kind of over this little lip section right there. So just collapse that as much as you possibly can just like so. Then take this entire section and this again really interesting engineering here that the legs collapse. So you take this and you pull this out. It's a little bit tricky to do but just kind of wedge the sides pulling them apart and you can see that it is on a little bit of a sliding thing right here so when you had a collapse to bring that all the way down and now you kind of fatten his leg up take this rotate this around that goes in right there reach in here this is a little bit tricky to get to but and then bring this it's a little bit tricky to grab that like i said bring that all the way out and then you fill in that uh, gap right there then you can collapse this all together rotate this piece down like so come around here to the back section if this didn't uh, tab in you can just collapse this back up and lock that in a place right there and basically you have this leg done uh, really impressive engineering in terms of going from that thick to that thick it's quite quite impressive again so we're going to come around here pull this section down bring this all the way out rotate this around you got that bottom section rotate this in let's see bring that there you go bring that around and that come on get that all right there we go like so and then pull there we go just pull that whole thing out go ahead take this detach this so push down here and you wedge this away and then you fold that down like so so you got that tuck that up and under bring this actually you need to make sure that this clears so fold this just like that so it's positioned like that and then fold this all the way up and fit that right like so come around here to the leg you want to again like i said kind of wedge the two halves apart it's tricky to get to but kind of grab hold of it pull it apart bring this up make sure that that's shifted about right there and again, this is a little bit, I'm just pull that apart, a little bit tricky to get that all the way out. Kind of push there. There we go. Oh, well, there you are. And then sandwich everything together. This whole back section will then shift up, locking that into place like so. Come around here to the front, rotate this down, and then adjust this foot a little bit more. And there you have his legs done, which again, like I said, really impressive engineering for those now we're going to get this kind of out of the way now uh, as you were seeing i left these little pieces tucked up like that because you now have to rotate his body and as you do it you, you kind of have to move these little pieces out of the way to do it so do a, a full 180 degrees then you can just rotate this back if you really wanted to and uh, kind of get that there uh, but i like leaving it out again it just kind of keeps some uh, extra space here kind of manipulate everything else coming up a little bit uh, we're going to start off with this now this part right here is probably the trickiest for me and it's a part that I, 
I, I, I don't really like all that much, to be honest, because there are several different tabs that you have to get perfectly lined up. And it does feel like you're kind of forcing things. The plastic and material feels very sturdy. So I'm not necessarily concerned about it breaking per se. I just don't like the, the feel of kind of forcing things. So what I do here is, I, I know people are gonna freak out, but I got a very blunt edge little wedging tool. So you come around here and I'm gonna do it very carefully. Just kind of wedge this a little and kind of pop that away. And as you do it, you should be able to get a little bit of a pressure kind of in there to kind of pull this whole section out. I, like I said, I, I don't know a better way to do it uh, other other than wedging some, some parts. So just kind of pull that section out like so. Then you can easily move this piece, uh, detach this, right here and then you can swivel this piece out and then kind of hinge this around so you got this little uh, tab right on the inside here that has to lock in there meanwhile you have to get this little tab uh, i don't know if how well you can see that you get that little tab to lock into there and then you got uh, oh i'm sorry you got a little notch i'm sorry the little notch actually goes here this little tab then has to go there so it's really kind of annoying to do here we're going to rotate these around and just kind of well let's see go the opposite way and then you can tuck those up on the back like that so again do that on this side uh, and then bring that up just like so we're going to then take this entire section on a, a separate hinge down lower and then just kind of pull this away from the body and again we're just going to put it back here we'll fiddle with that later on and then we're going to actually start working on these arms which can be a little bit tricky as well uh, first i'm going to extend that all the way out come around here to this back section let's see if i can get this uh, in a good position for you to see this little piece right here needs to hinge up and then you take this in this little piece, and I'm going to pull that away, and this little piece then comes back just like so. Uh, you can leave that, but rotate this all the way around, and then this collapses in just like that, creating the uh, basic shoulder form. So we're going to leave that just like that, and then come around here to this side, and rotate this piece around. We're going to extend that arm, this little piece here, We'll rotate around like so. Take this little back section, fold this out, get a little fingernail in there, and pull this piece. Now I'll just use this. Pull that slightly away from the body, just like that. Then take this whole back section, this little piece rotates back, just like so. Spin that around, take this on the inside, this rotates out and up. Take this little back, fold that around, and keep that extended out, and then you collapse this. Let me see, oh, there we go. Yeah, I didn't have that pull all the, all the way out. So make sure you have that fully extended, and then pull this, and then that locks up in just like so. And then again, you have these little pieces, fold those towards the back like so. Keep these angled down, and then you rotate this, rotate that, and again, then come around here, just creating some extra space, rotate these little pieces down like so, pull that down like so, and then these pieces here in the front will separate. You really do just have to practice. Just pull this out like that, and then you can see where this is supposed to be lined up like so there we go so get that tabbed in and then you can fold this up and in like that so again I'm going to rotate this kind of get that out of the way so you can kind of sort of see what's going on you're going to collapse this up then fold that in rotate this get that out of the way rotate that and then that will lock in right there and you can bring these back and around fold this so it's kind of straightened out and then just straighten out these arms so it does as you can see get fairly complicated in terms of uh, some of the uh, actual steps rotate the little fists out i have a hard time with it so again i'm just going to push from there fold the hand out like so then collapse this bring that down rotate the fist around take this section this will rotate around and then this little piece right here lifts 
right like so. Do that on the opposite side. So let's see if I can get the fist out without using, there we go. Just like that, collapse this section down, straighten the arm out just like that. Kind of keep that straight and everything. Come around here to the back, you can just take this. You can fold that down like so. This back section here, that lifts up. This, you have a double hinge right here. You got a section right up here and then a section down here. So you have to kind of manipulate that around to get this uh, in the proper position. So just kind of flex this around and you don't have enough, enough space right there. So you have to rotate that and as you can see, it gives you more clearance down here to go up right there. So just bring that there. You can then take these, position these around, and these come around to the back, and these will actually clip onto the back section right here. You kind of position these little hip skirts around, straighten out his arms, and then the final pieces are going to be the chest. You have this, slide this forward on a little sliding hinge that comes out and then spin that around just like so uh, again position everything a little bit more cleanly fix the legs some as i was a little bit rough with them but when you're done after all of that there you have megatron in his robot mode now to complete the look, like I talked about, uh, to prevent the face from getting scraped in any way, I actually do remove it. Now you don't have to, it's just a precautionary sort of thing. So go ahead and take whatever face you want and slide it on just like that. And then for the fusion cannon, again, you don't have to take it off to transform them, but it does make it a little bit easier. So to complete this, you just take this uh, front section, collapse that all the way in, come around to his arm, put that right there, and then you just, well, no, you bring that there, and then you slide it down, locking it into place, and there you have the completed look for the Decepticon leader himself, Megatron. And this guy really is absolutely just breathtaking, in my opinion. The amount of engineering in this is really quite impressive. I mean, you could see the gun is a very solid and accurate looking gun. And then robot mode here just looks terrific. Now, there is a huge debate amongst collectors of which is the best looking version of Megatron in terms of a masterpiece figure. Obviously, this is the official one and there are several third party ones. Personally, to me, all those third-party ones, they have aspects that look good, but then aspects that I think just make it l fall apart. Now, there are aspects on the Masterpiece one that I think could be cleaned up a little bit better, but all in all, I think there's more good with this figure than bad. Uh, the bad is probably right here, and I guess maybe like the, the top section here as well. Honestly, I don't think it looks all that bad in hand. But like when I look at the back here, I'm like, you know, as bad as that looks, I think the legs on some of the other third party ones look far worse. You know, Apollyon had legs that just weren't very clean. I, I, I don't even remember some of the names of the other ones, but a lot of them just had aspects that really were even worse looking than I think the, uh, the top section here and then his back. Now, again, taking a look at his accessories, uh, you have his gun, obviously, to, I mean, yeah, I guess you would kind of remove this if you're going to uh, use this, because, I mean, he didn't have his fusion cannon when he used that, right? So, just open up his hands, you got a little tab section here on the inside, very kind of common with Masterpiece figures, you tab that in there, you bring that around, and then you got the little trigger finger, well, actually, you want to put the little trigger finger underneath there, get it in there, something like that, so you can create that look if you really wanted so obviously you have the sword you can put this obviously you can put the little blast on there as well so you can have him holding that much like he was holding his gun obviously you can take his little headpiece and that just literally just plops there you can really very simple for well you drop it in terms of the display his key for vector sigma literally you just open his hand but where it's kind of resting there I guess they, they say to take the thumb and move that down to kind of stabilize it some. So you can do something like that at, for it. His hands swap out really very easily. This section here just slides down and then you bring in his uh, mace weapon. Uh, I got this section on here and you just slide that up just like that. Oh, did I have that sideways? Let me, I'm dropping everything, so I apologize. So slide that up. 
I get that up in there? Or maybe it is supposed to be there. Oh, there we go. So you can do that. And again, I love the fact that you can articulate this. I mean, you can get some really cool, awesome poses with this guy. Like he's about to blast you. Like he's swinging this around. I mean, obviously you can't see it because it's a little bit too tall there. But uh, I mean, I think that that is great to include that kind of articulated sort of chain. Uh, if you do want to use the regular one, you can use that as I showed you before. You just swap out those uh, top sections. So this little piece here just uh, unpegs and then you just peg it into the actual chain section itself. So great the added bonus with that as well. So sliding this back up and putting that in there. Uh, and then obviously he's got his face accessories. Now those ones swap out really easily as you can see. You literally just lift this up. One thing that I love is this little hidden detail underneath his face. Uh, zooming in so that you can see that a little bit closer. That's the design schematic that we saw when Unicron reformatted him. I, I, I love that. That's a, a small little touch that I don't think any third party figures have done yet. So that's a nice little kind of added feature that that's kind of hidden. I mean, you'd really only see it when, when you take his face off. So, I mean, it's cool that you can do that. So, again, you got the little smiling face. Put that right there. Which, you know, some people haven't really been too keen on. I like it. I mean, when I think of a maniacal leader, I think of somebody who's going to sit there and cackle sometimes, and that definitely has it. Here's uh, it, the angry face, which, again, works perfectly for him. One that I think absolutely looks gorgeous is the battle damage one. This one just screams my childhood, I guess. So that just slides on just like that. But to complete that look, you have to take this, and this section here slides up. I moved up that entire thing, uh, but great detail you can see underneath here in terms of the molded detail and such and then you have this and you got the little kind of sliding rails here along the side that literally just puts over there and then slides down and again that's just terrific looking coming in to take a closer look uh, that's gorgeous i mean they did a great bang up job in creating that and obviously you can have him holding his gun and you can have that you know seen very nicely recreated but that just looks absolutely gorgeous i didn't push that down all the way one thing that i mean if you watch my reviews of like hot toy figures one thing that i've talked about in terms of battle damage pieces that a lot of iron man figures has is, is that well i like the battle damage pieces just something seems off when you have like all the dentine and cracking here for the chest and the head and then the arms are, are perfectly clean. The waist is, the legs are. He had a lot more battle damage than just the chest and the head. So I, I wish there were some more swapped out parts, but that's still really quite gorgeous nonetheless. And again, really does. And maybe even like with all these cracks, though I don't mean people talk about the panel lines, maybe all these panel lines do a good job of kind of recreating some of the cracks that he had in that battle. Uh, I mean, just using my imagination. So just sliding this up, getting the head off. I'm gonna put the uh, little smiling one back on there because I like the smiling one. And then you just, again, you slide this back down, get those rails lined up nicely, push that all the way down to that locks into place. Now, his biggest accessory obviously is the uh, fusion cannon, and it's also his most iconic one. So as you could hear before with you know the gun section, you have the blasting sound. Now, when you take this little section right here, which I love the fact that they actually made that red because again, that's a nice little added you know, accuracy touch. You move this to the middle section and you actually get the voice actor that originally provided the voice for Megatron in the Japanese cartoon. So, it's so good, Transform! Yeah, you know what I mean. I have no idea anything that he's saying, so... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no idea. So yeah, there's like five sounds. And then the last one is when you take the a little switch and move it all the way towards the back section, you get two different transformation sounds. So transforming one way and then transforming the other way. 
which again, I love that. And this is the first time that we have gotten a transformation gimmick with a masterpiece figure, which I, I think is perfect for Megatron. I mean, that just matches with it. And obviously at the price that we're paying for this guy, I like that that's something that's added. It also does have his uh, silencer as well as the stock here. These are also accessories that can be used here in the uh, a robot mode in terms of kind of display options and things of that nature. First, what you want to do is you want to come around here to this bottom section, and this is tough for me to get to, so I'm going to uh, just wedge this out like that. So you bring that little piece out there, and then you take this section, and then you rotate this all the way around. Now you come to uh, the back here of Megatron, and this bit here will fold down like so then you want to spin the uh, the back section around like that and then you take this guy and you slide it in here again just kind of putting it right there and you just bring this all the way up i move that whole thing down so keep this piece out like that and there's actually a, a little slot section underneath there that's going to tab in here so you just move this forward and you lock that and well it keeps flopping down so let me bring that up so you bring this up and then you push that down tabbing that into place right like so and bring this around and you're creating the gun face thing which i think you could do it with his g1 toy i unfortunately never owned the g1 toy of megatron so that's definitely one that i i need to get for my collection but then you take this and you got this little section right here bring his face around and you got these little grooves that are here that now this section grooves onto and that's his gun face um although it, it kind of all came detached there you go that's the gun face uh thing form um, silly, uh, like I said, I think it harkens to the original uh, G1 toy. Uh, I really could care less uh, about this as a display option. It's it's kind of neat, I guess, but not anything that I'm overly like excited about. So uh, removing this, sliding this off. Again, being careful. Oh, watch his face. Again, being careful to uh, not scrape any paint or anything like that. Rotate this piece around. And then I'm just going to bring that back up like that. Set him off to the side. Now, this can also be used as a kind of gun platform. I didn't really touch on this very much. But this bottom section here is actually die cast, which is nice. Okay, so yeah, you're going to push this button. And then this rotates this is really stiff but this piece here spins around it's tough to at least on mine to get that there we go so you spin that all the way around just like so you're going to bring that all the way to the front and then you take this and you attach this to it you can then take this piece that you have here and you're going to want to attach it on the inside of this guy so rotate this around and then this slots in just like so. And you have this little kind of cannon sort of thing. And then fold out the little handles here in the side. Rotate that. And you have a, a, a bit of a gun turret kind of thing. Which, again, cool. But nothing that I'm really going to use it for. But it's cool that they actually are making this kind of usable outside of just being the you know, silencer in the stock. I think that that's really quite neat. Then you have this. Again, we're going to spin this around. And then you come around here to the back of them. And you, you got like underneath here, you, you got this little section. And then you can actually take this and spin it around here and plug it into the back section. I, I don't get it in there very well, but you just kind of plug it in there and you can have him using this as like a flight stand uh, again it's not something that i really care that much about honestly uh, it's a nice touch and like i talked about i love the fact that they actually use this for something that's a really great kind of in inclusion i suppose but for me as i talked about uh, th these are just and you got the little articulation point and everything and then it spins here I i'm just going to put these off in a storage anyhow so it, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me I i'm just very simple and i think that good old megatron here just looking like this is exactly what i want 
One thing that I did forget to talk about, uh, you do have the a little orange piece right here. As I, I, I did talk about how this is removable. This one here, I cannot get to actually remove. Uh, it, it does feel like it's glued in there. I, I have tried and I've actually even scraped it here along the sides using some kind of pliers to just like grab it and then just like twist to get that off which is what I did for this. But this, I think that there's more of a surface area because this is a lot smaller than the actual barrel. Uh, I mean, you can, I don't know, it, it moves freely in there. So it's like they had to put a lot of glue in there and then put that in. So I, I don't think they got as good of a, a connection on there for this. This one though, I think that they were able to get a real good connection. But again, for me, I don't really care because these pieces are gonna go into storage. I was just mostly concerned about removing this, and at least on mine, I was able to fairly easily. Now as for Megatron himself, again, just really quite impressive uh, with how this figure turned out. Uh, I am fidgeting with the legs mostly because, uh, as you can see, they kind of go back and then these bits here are a uh, flatter surface, but uh, due to the, the rounded nature of my table, I do have to kind of adjust a little bit more, but he does look absolutely terrific this is exactly what i want megatron to look like i wish i still had the mp05 lying around to do a comparison with because he's also dramatically smaller mp05 is like up here by comparison to this guy but the new one just has a, a much better look and the engineering in it to create this from a very realistic gun i, I think is amazing again like i said the ugliest part would probably be the back section but it really doesn't bother me all that much. I mean, especially when you just look at it from the front. I just think that that looks great. Uh, now, obviously, we got to do some size comparisons. So, setting him off to the side. Here he is next to Masterpiece Shockwave as well as Soundwave. And you can see that these guys are a little bit smaller than Megatron, which is the way that it should be. One thing that I do kind of miss and wish that Megatron had was something like what Soundwave had, had here in terms of a little kind of slot along the side for a laser beak. That would have been cool to be able to uh, have laser beak sit up on there. I don't know, maybe you could lift this up and have him sit on that's kind of weird looking. But uh, I mean, you could you could just have laser beak kind of sit there. But that would have been cool to include something like that. That would have been just a nice little added touch. But uh, size-wise, I mean, you can see how great these guys all look together. <laughs> and here he is next to the newer, uh, more updated masterpiece, Starscream. And again, scale-wise is perfect. This is obviously uh, the, the Decepticon crown of leadership, so it, it might as well be on that guy. And finally, here he is with Masterpiece Optimus Prime. And even here, Megatron is a tiny bit taller, which is accurate. Megatron was slightly taller than Optimus, so that also is very nice to see here, represented in terms of toy form. Now, for his articulation, the head is on a very nice ball joint, so you get a very good range of motion with it. Kind of tilts side to side. Obviously, it looks up and down for some good flying poses. Rotates back and forth, obviously. The shoulders here, very nice ratchet joints all the way around. They also hinge. I'm sorry, have a ratchet joint moving up and down. Uh, he does rotate at the upper part of the bicep. I guess one could kind of say that this is a little bit ugly, but I think that this actually looks pretty cool. You've got this little bit right here that when you move the elbow that bit here you can see creates a kind of a break in the sculpt but when you bring it all the way up it's now flush again so that actually looks pretty cool how they did it it's just a kind of partial curl makes that look a little bit gappy but i don't think it's really all that bad so you do get that nice range of motion the uh, wrists do rotate very nicely the thumb at the the main knuckle here does hinge forward and back and then the fingers what you have are uh, at the uh, the back section here they're uh, connected all the way down here but these knuckles also do flex so those are really nicely well done you got two points of articulation the finger uh, index finger is individually articulated at this knuckle this knuckle and uh, yeah that's it so yeah you get two joints here and here so you get a really good kind of trigger finger sort of thing uh, some people complain about the uh, cannon being on the side you can actually rotate that around and then rotate the hand and you can bring this up like that and have him blasting if you wanted to do uh, a pose like that instead of having the uh, cannon off on the side of the arm uh, just rotate the hand 
get that come on why aren't you spinning there you go spin that around and then spin that around if you didn't want to have it like that you don't have to you can actually get a blasting kind of pose which looks really cool i like that but you have the option of keeping it off on the side as well oh, getting these arms out of the way he does rotate at the waist he also does have a very nice ab crunch uh, you can see that it's got this hinge right here so when you do bend it it creates uh, some gapping right there but you can get a nice range of motion there and i like how you can actually do that really helps to kind of emote the poses form uh, these little pieces here can flex out a little bit to get a little bit more range of motion moving forward and back uh, they move in and out these little pieces here can flex out so you can move that in and out very nicely you can rotate them at the upper part of the thigh it's got uh, soft ratchet joints here at the knee but uh, real nice range of motion you can see it's more than 90 degrees and then you come down to the ankle and these have a nice ratchet joint forward and back and then a hinge side to side so you can get them kind of spreading his legs out and get a fairly wide stance with them like so i mean that's pretty good and he has heft to him uh, as i'm feeling him and everything there there is a good degree of heaviness uh, kind of in the feet area especially down here in the bottom where some die cast is uh, you can definitely feel the weight on this guy which does give you a, a sense of quality and being that this is a, a higher a price point figure people have complained about that price and i think that for what you feel in terms of the, the quality for the figure and including all the accessories the posability everything like that the fact that this guy has a sheer part count that seems to blow away any other masterpiece figures that we've gotten recently. Uh, it, it really does, in my opinion, justify the price that we're paying for them. And I, I guess I could have did this for a size comparison before, but here's the little tiny handgun version that came with, I, I want to say maybe Starscream. I don't know, we've gotten a couple of these. Even if you never transform him again, you can have a perfectly in-scale representation of Megatron. They've been released many times. So now to transform him back into his gun, this is probably the more difficult of the two transformations. Mostly because you do have to line everything up fairly perfectly. But one thing that I will say is that when you get this out of the box, he is already in this mode. And the instructions to transform him are done, if I can get to it, are done from robot mode all the way to his actual gun mode. So it does make it a little bit easier. So all that being said, to transform him again, just to kind of get things going, uh, I am going to remove this. You don't have to just because uh, it really doesn't matter very much, but I am going to remove it just for kind of clearance issues. And then uh, I'll leave the face on now because I'll show you just how tight it basically gets. And then I'll, I'll take it off at that point. Now, to transform him back, like I talked about, it is a little bit more tricky going back into his gun mode because unlike coming into the robot mode, you have to fit things into a much more tighter frame, I guess. But it's also a little bit easier because the instructions go from robot mode to that gun. So first, come around here to the back. You can lift this back section up just like so, and then you can hinge this piece down. Uh, just get this all the way down like that. Go ahead, take this, fold this, piece back just like that you can kind of keep this lifted up and then fold these pieces out just like so and then rotate these around and bring that uh, Decepticon logo on the outside so you can do that on this side rotate this spin that around that way kind of just leaving that like so come around here to the front of them take the chest rotate this piece around and this is where i was kind of talking about that the face could rub up against because what you're going to do is then collapse this piece up uh, and there is not a lot of clearance this little hinge piece that comes up really does rest up pretty much right across and i'm going to bring this back down again uh just if i can hinge this down uh, it rests right up against basically his chin uh, so that's where it, it does bother me over time about it potentially scraping so right now i am going to just take the face off that's just going to give a little bit more space right there and you don't have to worry about uh, scraping any paint so collapse that up just like that go lift these arms up just get these out of the way then you can spin these pieces around towards the front of his torso then angle these down and then spin them around just like that then you can bring them together and they tab together right down the center uh, very very securely 
Go ahead and then take these arms, kind of angle these down. Come around here to the back. Take this section. You're going to rotate this piece out, get that out of the way, and then spin that. Uh, get that up like that. You had that up like that. Rotate this all the way back and down. You can do that on this side as well. Kind of lift that up, get that out of the way, pull this away from the body, and then you can spin this all the way around. And then make sure you have enough clearance right there and then that kind of soft tabs down flush You can probably take these entire uh, shoulder sections and just detach those just kind of getting that out of the way And then lifting this up again You you have that a uh, kind of clearance issue that you're sort of cleaning up You want to then rotate this around just like that And then you can see where everything basically kind of fits together with the arms Yeah, so go ahead and spin this keep that there and we're just going to then bring this around and this whole section here will lock down kind of just lift that up take this section pull that down just like so you can do that on this side as well again you just rotate the shoulder bringing all this into place come around here to this bring this pull this section all the way back and again lining all that up bring that down just like so come around here I kind of forgot to do this you can take this section and you can do it any time really I again like I said I like leaving these little pieces up just create some extra clearance issues bring these out just like that and then you can reach in here and you can rotate these pieces up and tuck those away right now so get those up along the inside come around back to these arms you want to uh, spin this around where it is there we go open this piece back up get your little finger in there now to actually get the hand in here you have to make sure that the finger is in this kind of position where it's uh, over the thumb a little bit so you want to tuck the thumb in and then fold the uh, lower section of the fingers down and then bring the index finger down and you can see that it sticks out a little bit that gives you enough clearance to get all the way in there leave this little piece down and then you can rotate this and then collapse that in just like so so do that on this side as well spin this around so you can see what I'm doing open this that finger section is already in the proper sort of configuration so that just slides in there and then you can rotate this collapse that down just like so and basically you have the uh, sides of the guns done uh, again you can then I mean you can leave the fusion cannon on there if you want you don't have to I'm gonna rotate these around like that uh, I kind of forget how these are supposed to be but uh, I think it's supposed to be something along those lines and coming around here this part can get a little bit tricky again uh, it mostly because of how things tab in so rotate this whole section around make sure you have that all the way cleared around and then bring these together now this part like I said I I'm not a very big fan of how this all actually tabs in uh, mostly because I feel like I'm forcing everything it, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to break but these little tabs uh, I, I do have a problem with so what I'm going to do is gonna fit it in there uh, well let me get that out fit this in make sure that's hinged all the way down you want to have that kind of flat along there and then you got this little tab right there that's going to slot in underneath here so just bring all this in and fold this over get this all collapsed in along the side make sure that you get that over this top top section right here that'll kind of slot into place if it's lined up properly let's see um, again fiddle with it there you go and now this part right here like I said it, it's tough to get to this so I'm going to line this up and then bring this in and kind of try to push it down just like that and then push it all together and you can see that uh, going this way it's a little bit easier than trying to pull it away I don't like the tabbing in that that's really at least in my opinion one of the kind of trickiest aspects come around here then you can then rotate this around just straightening out that barrel and then we come down to the legs again just kind of leave the, the arms dangling out to the side like that first I'm gonna start with this one so that you can kind of see extend this out then you want to make sure that you take this section and kind of give this a little pull right here uh, get that kind of out of the way and this again can be a little bit tricky you pull this out and then you have to create enough clearance to rotate this little piece all the way around so make sure you pull that as much as possible so again just get that and then 
Let's see, do I have enough to pull, rotate that around? Not yet. So you just kind of have to keep pulling until you get it. There you go. So get that to rotate out like that. There we go, just like so. And then hinge this. This is being a little bit tricky. There we go. So spin that around, and then you can pull this entire thing. This joint here is really very stiff, so rotate that all the way out, you have that fully extended. And like I said, it's a little bit tricky just to get the clearance here. Take this, lift this up along this side, come around here to the back, take this back section, you wanna push down here, that will detach this, reach in here, pull this little top section out like that. You can kinda just hinge this away and then come around here to this, separate this, and then this section will collapse down on the inside. Take this outer, I'm sorry, this inner section right here, pull this away and just leave it like that. And then it will collapse in on itself. Just kind of wiggle it a little. Make sure, I'll make sure that this stays out. Hinge that. There we go, pull that away. And then this will rotate and collapse in on itself. You can then take this section, bring this back up. That will lock into place. Come around here to this. And then you just bring this all the way down. Fold this around like so. Get that kind of out of the way. And this then comes up and just rests in there. But you, you kind of have to make sure you get enough push in there to bring it all the way up so it sits there. And then again, just leave that like that. You can fiddle with that here in a little bit. Take this little intersection, rotate this out, and then you do that with this leg as well. So again, rotate this out. This one here extends a whole lot easier for some reason, uh, mostly because the joint is not as stiff. So pull this out like that, and then spin this around. This, this joint right here is a lot looser than the other one is, uh, so I don't know why that is, but extend that all the way out. You can then rotate this piece up like so. Come around here to the back, push down here in the bottom, which will detach this. Fold this little flap bit here all the way out. Uh, again, kind of keep that extended out like so. Detach the leg sections, and then pull this piece out so lift that you can collapse that down pull this out again make sure that this little back section is all the way out and then you can just sandwich the legs together and they collapse very nicely rotate this back section up locking that in again kind of just pivot this wherever you really want hinge this back and then collapse that up along that side just like so come around here Fold that, and now uh, again, you, you wanna kinda leave these down. I'm going to be getting him bent into the proper sort of uh, leg configuration. So keeping these up as much as you possibly can, then rotate this around. Again, you may have some uh, clearance issues here. Just kinda go slow and manipulate things as you're doing it. So you then rotate this 180 degrees, just like that. Again, you're gonna be going like that, so you can see how this is coming together. Go ahead, bring the legs together. Again, if you have a hard time in terms of uh, detaching the uh, hip sections, kind of pop that and then pop that, bring those two bits down. You got that screw right here in the very middle. Just turn that like uh, one, one and a half turns and it'll loosen it up where you can bring these together a lot easier. And then go down the middle, just tabbing everything together. Tab the hammer, tab the uh, handle, bring all this down, just kind of line everything up appropriately. Get that tab together, that tab together, this will kind of fidget around. And then once you have that, you can then actually bend the legs down, kind of like so. If you want to, you can kind of push a little bit on here and then hinge this piece. So keep that lined up it's separated a little bit and then just push that down and fold them there at the uh, kind of thigh pieces bring these out to the side this can be a little bit tricky to get this because again you're kind of running out of room right here but you want to i'm sorry you can fold this out fold out this little flap right there do that on this side 
also fold that out and then you just kind of lift this up again making sure you try to get some clearance here so bring this up and everything sort of <laughs> fits into place you bring that up bring that this piece here will then rotate hinge outward so you'll have it like that again just kind of make sure you're getting enough space through everything so there we go rotate that down and then make sure you keep these uh, two sections together like that hinge that out keep it there we go and uh, this middle section right here is going to slot in between the actual handle so that's where you want to put it so just kind of wedge that down like so and you can see everything coming together then make sure you line up these little side panels here getting that along the proper area and collapse that up as much as you need really to get those little pieces and hopefully you can see this around the side where you can just kind of push and lock that into place do that with a little top section as well do that on this side again just kind of push everything locking everything together there we go are you locked in there you are keep that you may have to fidget with the uh, legs a little bit to kind of keep them straight reach down here kind of lift this up get that out of the way this section you can fold down and then you can lock that up right there now this piece right here you need to make sure that the hammer goes all the way back and down for right now and then this section here you need to rotate that up and then sandwich these pieces together make sure that that little flap is pulled down fit this up and you can see how these bits here kind of fit in the spaces here so as you rotate that up that will lock in right there very nicely do that on this side as well bring that up kind of fit that in bring that half in like so squeeze everything down the middle can oh that's what i forgot that's why i, was, I forgot to move this little piece out so get that detached swivel that down make sure that that piece stays out just like so there we go and then you fold that there we go and then just squeeze everything down the center just like that uh, now when i initially transformed them keep that all pushed in keep that pushed in there's a little tiny tab that kind of locks underneath this section right here just kind of push that down and under uh, when i first showed you the transformation i actually had this in the wrong position this needs to rotate around and then there is actually a little tab that kind of locks that into place right there come around here make sure that these pieces are pushed and locked down here that may uh, sort of put some pressure on there make that pop out but just kind of fiddle with it get it lined up properly and then lock that in and then you take this there are actually little tabs that do lock in right here so you push this up and you will feel it lock into place then just angle this position this around obviously you can take the fusion can in here you can put that right there slide that back or maybe no maybe i should be sliding it forward oh yeah put that down slide it forward and if you didn't have it like that that's the uh, robot mode extend that out and there you have megatron back in his walter p38 mode now when it comes to megatron i touched on this a little bit this is one of the more expensive masterpiece figures that we've gotten and people have actually really complained about it for me though i really think that what we're getting is well worth the price there are a lot of aspects that go into this in getting it to us that do increase the cost. Number one, his package is much larger than what we've been getting. So it is more expensive for you know, retailers to get it shipped here to the United States. When you look at overseas and Asian market companies, the prices are lower. But when you factor in how much it costs to ship it to you, even when it's just pretty standard shipping, it raises the price significantly getting it much closer to what North American retailers are selling this for. 
Obviously, it's going to be a little bit higher because these companies do have to make some money. But the base price that it's kind of offered at, I do think is okay. You do get a lot of accessories with them. There is a fair amount of die cast that is in this figure. It does give a much you know heavier and more substantial feel to the figure. And like I talked about, the part count on this is ridiculous. So, I mean, it does make sense that this guy is going to be more pricey. And I initially thought that maybe some of that was because uh, he is a gun and I, I didn't know if you know, retailers here in the United States would have to pay a higher kind of import to the government or something like that to kind of get clearance to bring a toy gun in. I, I did reach out and talk to several companies that I am close with and they said, no, that's not really even the case. A lot of it is just the fact that it is a larger package and there is much more in this figure than, say, Grapple. All in all, though, I think that this guy turned out great. Are there some issues on him? Yes. Gun mode wise, though, I think he looks amazing. Yes, he does have panel lines, but there's no way that you're going to be able to get rid of that. The transformation is complicated. But as I talked about in terms of the quality of the figure, I feel that he's durable and the breakages that we're seeing I, I really do feel come from people forcing things. Now, that's not always going to be true for everybody, but it's like when you're trying to like move something, like, oh, it's not going to... And then you feel yourself shaking, and then it pops. It's like, can you blame the toy for breaking? And I, that's what I see in terms of a lot of the pictures, of, of the stuff that is breaking on this guy. I just feel as if it's being ham-handed. And I think if people just took a little bit you know, slower of an approach with it, utilize the resources such as videos like this, I think you can do it fairly well. But the transformation is complex enough to create a gun that looks as good as this and create a robot mode that looks amazing. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. And in my personal opinion, this is the very best Megatron figure that we have ever gotten, whether it be official or third party. This one here wins. So no matter where you choose to get it from, do it. This guy is well worth having in your display. But to make it easy for you, if this is a figure that you'd like to pick up, he is available right now at Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You go to Big Bad Toy Store where you can check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of the wide range of Takara Tomy Transformer figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. Thanks for sticking with me this whole time. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video, and you never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you're already subscribed, do me a real quick favor and click on that bell right below this video, and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other.